Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. And today we have the opportunity to figure out why this particular fishing reel failed. Uh, I do a series on those every now and then just because, well, you learn as much in failure as you do in success, maybe more. And this one, the Ambassador 5500C, well, it has a free spool release that doesn't uh, return. And boy, is it tight. Well, it did return there. But it's just tight. It takes two fingers and quite a little arm strength to make this thing move. We're going to figure it out. If it's moving all around, a general indication of why the reel is failing is dried grease or dirt or something stuck inside the reel. Maybe some broken line or something. And uh, well, we're going to use this one as a little bit of an education to figure it out. And well, we're going to service the reel as well. This reel belongs to Keith. He sent it in to me. Said it needs some service, and it absolutely does. And uh, we're going to start servicing this by taking off the exterior pieces. You saw me remove the tie-down clip by taking out the handle screw, and uh, then removing the uh, the nut cap that holds all of this down. Well, we're going to continue. As I do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please use that notification button to let you know when I'm posting. And uh, Regardless of what type of fishing reel you're interested in, whether it's one of these round bait casters or maybe a low profile bait caster, maybe it's just Abu reels in general, or maybe it's uh, salt water reels, whatever it is, you'll get notified of what I'm working on that day and uh, you'll have an opportunity to see if that's a video that might interest you and whether you want to go look at it. So I encourage you to subscribe and to, uh, to hit those notifications. You just saw that I removed an E-clip. That E-clip holds the gear shaft on, and uh, that also enables us to take the handle off. Now, there's a little bit of dirt on the outside. Maybe that's a clue to what's going on on the inside as well. And I like to clean the parts as I go as well. So we're going to just use a little bit of metal polish and a very ultra-fine steel wall. It's a, it's a 4-0 steel wool, which are very, it's for polishing, it's not, uh, not very coarse or abrasive, but it does help you get some of the stuff off. And then we're just going to towel that off with the paper towel. That should polish it right up. And then when I take the pieces and parts off, they go into a parts tray so I don't lose them. And it's important. You have a small screw here, you have the E-clip here. Those things get lost if you leave them on the table. So I like to get them off the table and onto the shaft as soon as, uh, into that bucket as soon as I can. While we're working on a shaft, that's kind of what the verbal slip was about here. Next up then is a tension washer that's lost its tension. That, uh, that enables uh, you not to trap the star adjuster. Well, if you have that situation, just grab a, a little pliers and bend it back. It should have a little bit of a U-shape as a tension spring and then that goes in the bucket as well. We're going to take our star adjuster off next. It comes off in a counterclockwise manner. And again, I'm seeing evidence. There's a lot of dirt in that that's under here. So maybe that's all this is when we get done with all of this. It's just, uh, just a lot of dirt. Maybe it's clogged the mechanisms. Or we'll find out what the other ones are. The other hypothesis would be that we've got some broken line in there or something. I don't know. We're going to figure it out. That's for sure. All right, there's three screws that hold the case on. Looks like maybe uh, we even had an attempt to take this apart already because these screws are being loosened by hand. If you can loosen them by hand, generally that's not tight enough. It could be boat vibration that did that as well. With all that off now, we should be able to remove the side plate. Here's our first look. There's a spool here. We want to take that spool out because we want to make sure we're checking everything while we're doing this. There was a, uh, a break. There's two breaks. Those are these little pieces. Don't lose them. And this is the one fault of my black parts tray. When you put a black part in there, well, it's, uh, it becomes problematic. I don't generally like working on reels with line on them. It almost always results in it getting trapped. But this is not my reel, so I'm going to preserve the line. I'm going to put a little rubber band on there to see if I can't hold down the line so that when I go to re reinstall, it doesn't get trapped. As I mentioned, 
one of the frequent causes for a reel bogging down is that line got broken inside the reel. All right, that should do that. Put that into my parts tray. I'm looking over here and I'm noticing that we've got a lot of dirt and everything on the inside. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup right here. I'm going to take a rod and reel cleaner. I'm using pen precision reel, rod and reel cleaner. And I'm just going to ride that around the side here, see if I can't mop up a lot of that general dirt. And that's just kind of reinforcing my theory, although it's still just a theory at this point, that uh, uh, we just have a lot of dirt in there. I can't reach behind there with the scrubby, so I'm just going to use some penetrating oil and a cotton swab. Let's see if I can't get more of that off here. So as, as good as you might try, to get the old greases and oils off. Sometimes, well, it just it varnishes over in that, and if it does, you gotta do your best with what you got. Well, I'm noticing that there's a lot of very dry grease on this worm shaft here, or the junction of the worm shaft. That's kind of telling me that even though the outside's clean, the rest of it probably isn't. Well, while we're doing this, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel, maybe about the data manufacturer of the reel, maybe about it's how it's used, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck, you're looking for a way to get unstuck, if you uh, leave those questions in the comments section, I will try to help you with that. Well, it's the same thing on this side. We've got a heavy accumulation. I'm not sure, but I'm going to soak down the shaft of this reel. Then I'm going to pedal the reel over to the side so I can remove the pawl because you want to check the pawl as well. Generally, if you get a lot of dirt, the shoulders of the pawl are going to have a lot of dirt on it, so it doesn't help just to squirt some oil into the, the worm gear. You really do want to take the pawl out, make sure that it's clean moving freely. I just had a reel just come in. Yeah, look at that. It's, it may be hard for you to see, but there's just a pile of grease all around that shoulder. That will certainly make it hard to have it pivot and turn backwards. So you want to just scrape that off. And then you want to make sure that the tips on these paws are all uh, even not chipped or bent. Sometimes they get that way when folks want to try to force the issue when it's really about cleaning. All right, this one looks pretty good. Now, let's slide that over to the side here. That's going to give me a little bit better opportunity to do one last little try at cleaning this uh, side plate here. It's not perfect, but it's a whole lot better than it was. So a lot of what you're doing here in terms of real service, it's about cleaning up the pieces of parts, inspecting them, and uh, making sure that uh, there's no damage to them. And if there is damage, obviously replacing the pieces. I'm just grab that uh, fight there with my paper towel, but I'll just grab that do this side as well. So there's a lot of dry grease here. I think my initial thoughts are probably correct. The inside of this is probably very, very uh, dried out with all the creases. But we'll see. All right, I'm going to just roll this back to the position where I can re reinsert the pinion gear. I use a micro pliers for that. It's a little tough squaring that up, getting that into the cavity. It's a pretty tight fit. Then what you want to do is just grab some oil, get that to surround that pole, and then oil down your worm gear as well. Once we've done that, we can take that pole cap again, and we can tighten that up. And if you have big hands like I do, you just need to have patience. 
And normally I'll go in and do the gear side first. But I'm just seeing that this is an issue. And I'm trying to, uh, to deal with them as, I, as they come along. able to turn that. We are, it's moving easier. And while we're at it, we want to come over here and take the three screws out of the side plate. Just make sure that the inside of this one is cleaned up as well. And so much of trying to figure out why a reel is not performing well is knowing the basics of the reel itself, knowing the pivot points, if you will, in terms of what can bog it down. And sometimes it's that worm drive, so we went there. Sometimes it's the back here. Maybe the idler gear is not working right. Maybe there's some dirt. So go ahead and make sure that you change that out. Take it off. Make notes of what's going on before you proceed any further. I'm taking these screws out now. I'm laying these on my table because I intend to put them right back into the reel. We're going to do a visual inspection in here. We're going to oil the idler gear and then we're going to reassemble right away. So you can leave that there. Let's just pull that off. Let's take a look here. That's spinning nicely. When you do that, you want to check all the teeth on the gear. Make sure that it's there's no chips or cracks because if there is in this gear, it's going to result in a skip or a stoppage of the worm gear. All right, that. A little bit of an old crease on the side plate here. That's not making any damp difference. I'll clean that up. And then we can go reinstall this. We've seen that there's not an issue there with that. Line up your holes. Put your case back on. Make sure that your seams are nice and tight. And then go back in and put those three screws in. So the Ambassadors have been around a long time. They were introduced in the 1950s. May have even been late 40s. So I shouldn't leave the uh, pieces on your desk. They fly. So they were back in the early 50s. First ones had four screw side plates. So where you see a pivot point now on the bottom of this, uh, that one was a screw at one time. And those probably from a collectible standpoint are the, the more, more sought after of these reels. The design didn't change much over time, uh, but the, uh, the internals changed. I think there's probably three iterations of that now, but uh, this will be an early design, I'm sure. But the collectible ones would have a screw where this um, this point is here, and I believe that they stopped making the four screw side plates somewhere in the late 60s, like 1967 or so. All right, well, if we didn't already, let's make sure that we get some oil on that back burring. A little bit of grease onto the shaft of the spool. There's nothing behind the click mechanism here. It is held in place by a, uh, a C-clip or an E-clip. And I'll see if I can get that Dawn rubber band over the side. All right, and then just turn it, make sure that it's all good. Remember, I still have those two brakes in there. Just going to mop up some of that extra penetrating oil. That's one thing that keeps the bench looking good, I guess. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to take the two screws off. That's the remainder of this mechanism here. And this should pretty much tell us now what the... Uh, cause of the sluggishness is. And again, this, uh, this reel seems to have been opened already. All these screws are loose. So we have to just take a good look inside here and see what's going on. Well, we have a lot of uh, dried grease, as I suspected, with this one. So let's go ahead and, and get down to this. We should be able to remove this whole assembly now. 
and we're going to pull these pins, these two screws, or springs. I use my micro screwdriver for that. And I'm guessing that it's all sluggish because none of this stuff is moving very well. If you like, you can pull the springs. There's two different size springs, or you can just push them off to the side. Oh my gosh, this is... Yeah, so you can see how it's all kind of tarred up here. Best thing to do with this one, spray it down. Soak it with the penetrating oil. And then you just want to come in and do the same thing we did before. Get a cotton swab. Mop up all the old dirts and greases. This one has less of a swing on this side. And almost always that's exactly what the issue is here with this, this type of a reel. And look at it from underneath, there's probably some dry, oh, there's a lot of dried grease under there. Now you can, if you wanted to, you can remove this, this whole set assembly here. Um, I'm not seeing a particular reason at this point to do that. So there's a pin here, there's a spring. You can push that pin through and release this mechanism. You'll see the uh, the tag end for the spring down here. That'll enable you to remove all of that. Again, uh, I don't think that that's the cause of the issue here right now. So let's go ahead and get some grease onto the pinion gear. You want to reset these. These are your trip levers. It's got a double trip. And I use that micro pliers to do this. And we have one on this side. You got to be careful with these. The, uh, the wires that have the loop are pretty fragile. So don't go grabbing them and treating them badly. You may just find that they don't uh, come back to shape. All right, got that done. Just have a little bit of stuff here. This could have been a cause here. Not sure. Let's go over and take a look at this. Remove your set here. This is a pretty straightforward uh, gear shift in that. This has got the one that has the tension spring inside the main gear. Kind of interesting. We'll take a brush and grease that shaft. Light coated grease, don't put too much on there. And we can put the shaft back on. Those two studs below are what's going to hit these two wings for the trip. Well, it's not this that's causing the, the poor performance. That's spinning nicely. Not sure. Well, we don't have a drag washer in here. That's metal. That's the cause of the issue there, no doubt, is that uh, this is all getting pressed down. I'm going to go uh, shut the camera off, go get a drag washer. Okay, well, I went and got the the new drag washer, it's a replacement, as I mentioned, it's missing in here. And I think the other thing that happened was that this one, which belongs below, somehow wound up above. That belongs here. And I think somehow that belonged above, uh, that wound up above. So let's go see if we can't put this back together the right way. Before we do that, we want to load our anti-reverse dog in. Just like that. You can see it's a perfect fit to missing that, uh, that washer there. 
When you go to put your anti-reverse dog in, you need to swing it and line it up with the side post there. Just like that. Inspect your teeth on the main gear. They seem to be clean. They seem to be the right teeth. So I think we had a jam on this main shaft here because of all of the misaligned or misinstalled parts, but we're going to find out, that's for sure. Main gear goes in. Now we have that drag washer which belongs in there that was conspicuously absent. And then this is the one that's uh, the pressure plate. And there's a little tag on the main gear that kind of makes that noise when that gear is going out. That goes next. Then we have our stack. We have a plastic spacer and then a couple of tension washers. These are not flat washers. They're concave or convex. I always get them wrong. There's two of those. I, paste, I take the first one, put the wings up. Take the second one, put the wings down. And then there's a flat washer that the adjuster is going to press against. And that's the inside of the reel. So we can take our case and put our case back on. Look for the slot here. Make sure it's clean on the inside. I did a pretty good job before of that. There's a bearing in there, so make sure that you oil that bearing. And while I got it off the reel, it's usually a little bit easier to clean that. I still have some of that cleaner on here, so let's get that done. All right, let's put that back on now. Make sure your dog is staying in place. Line your pieces up and make sure that you put that handle pin so that it's inside the case here. Sometimes you have to push it down a little bit. And make sure that you've got a nice tight seam throughout. Go to your parts tray, get those two screws that belong there. Let's put that back together. Tighten one, tighten the other. Let's tighten down the star adjuster. I'm going to clean that off as well. I use a kitchen scrubby most of the time for that. You don't want to get too abrasive if you can avoid it. Granted, when there's some Lacked, uh greases and oils on there. You need to be a little bit more aggressive like we were over with the Paul section. So what have we done so far? Well, we've kind of tried to eliminate possibilities. So we started where it could bog down, which was the line guide assembly. Then we checked the back end of it to make sure that it was driving properly. And then we came and turned our attention to the gear side and we seem to have found some issues there. We'll see how much of a difference it makes. Okay, that's that. And then before I go too much further, I got two of those little brakes that belong on a spool, so I want to grab those. If you lose these brakes, you can make these out of small coffee stirrers, or you can make them out of the little hoses that come on these spray cans. Just snip off a little piece and put that on. That's assuming you can't order them any longer. But those will help slow the speed of the spool and help you avoid backlashing the reel when you're casting. And they always fall off. They move very easily. So just pay attention to that as you're disassembling the reel. When you go to put the reel back together, make sure they're set in so that you don't trap them on this ring. All right, let's go ahead and put this back on. There we go. 
Got some nice clothes. I'm going to finger tighten these, but we'll go back and we'll make sure that they stay tight. And then we'll see if there's any difference. If there's something else that's going on here, then it's probably a bench shaft or something. But uh, let's go ahead and put the handle back on. Handle goes in next. Oops. There's a reason why that clip jumped out there. It wanted to tell me it belongs next. Now the handle goes on. Now you want to take the E-clip and get that on to hold your shaft down. Sometimes you can get these on with finger strength. Sometimes you need an assist. In all cases, you need to pay attention. These darn little things are springy, and while well, they can uh, shoot, so just be careful or be prepared to go buy an assortment of eclips to replace the ones that wind up all over your shop. That's on. Go ahead and put the cap back on. It's a 10 millimeter nut. You want to tighten that down. You want to make sure your drag is tightened down as well. You don't want to trap the drag when you're tightening the handle. You want to make sure that your handle nut goes on square. If it's not going on square, you're going to cross strip the threads. Once you have that on, if you wind up with a flat side perpendicular to the hole, generally speaking, that will align so that you can put the tie down in. And before we go any further, we still have some old grease on this thing, so let's get that done too. So again, I want to suggest to you that uh, a subscription to my channel would be a good idea. That way you'll see everything I'm working on. And, uh, if you enjoy real repair, or if you enjoy trying to figure out why things go bad and how to fix them, well, then uh, I do a lot of that on this channel, and uh, it should be entertaining to you all. Got to tighten the hold down, and we'll give it a test. We'll see how we did. Looks like I'm off just a little bit there. So while I'm doing this, I want to thank our first responders and essential personnel, everybody who's been keeping us safe. Your efforts are appreciated. All right, let's uh, let's see what goes on here. We'll put it in free spool first. <laughs> oh, at least we got something that's spinning nicely. I'm going to take this rubber band off now because I think that's bumping the um, the line guide in the front. So it's time to cut that off. This spool is overfilled with line. You can see that there's no shoulder on the, uh, the spool. That needs to be about an eighth of an inch below there to operate uh, effectively. But right now we've got a pretty good spool situation here. Let's tighten it up. Oh, look at that, huh? So, uh, the guess here is that the Drag washers were somewhat of a, an issue, and the misinstall on the, um, the, the collar was the other issue. So there you go. Now you can adjust with the spool tension with these. You can adjust the centering with those, because you want to center your, your spool as well. I notice on this one, that there's a little bit of coning as well going to this side of the reel versus this. It's marginal, but it is happening. What that means is that this was pushed too much to this side and the line was gathering more to that side. This operates nice and smoothly now. That's it. That's your Garcia uh, Ambassador 5500C with a drag. Well, we haven't tightened that up all the way. There you go. With a drag. Now we're going to loosen it up with a drag that was misinstalled and missing. 
So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I'm wishing all of you a great day. Please uh, stay well, stay watching. Enjoy your fishing. And have a great day.